Hey, it's Mark Fidelsky, The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. For the last round table of the year, we've got a small group because everybody else is partying like rock stars. But we've got the dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you doing, man? I'm great. Happy New Year. Happy New Year uh, to you as well. We've got Scott Todd. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. Landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So I thought it'd be fun for the last round table podcast of the year to just reminisce about our favorite highlights of the year. So I was going to just go around and, and ask you guys some questions about your favorite things of 2019. Do you think that's a, a good way to end of the year? Yeah, why not? Why not? Good. Right. So, Scott Bossman, let's just start with you. All right. What was your favorite deal of the year, your favorite land deal of the year? All right. Awesome. Yeah, I, uh, it happened just recently, and um, I was talking about this on the office hours last night, too. And it's amazing the things that come about in this business if you're just consistent. So, if you're consistently hitting your buyer's list and and um, cons consistently mailing, consistently, you just got to be consistent. You got to be disciplined. So I got a call last week from a guy. He purchased a property for me about six months ago on terms. He's still paying for that property. Uh, actually, he sent me an email. He didn't call me. He said, hey, Scott, I want this property. Uh, I'm going to pay the down payment on it right now. And I'm like, that's amazing. Uh, he's like, yeah, I have a goal of owning a property in every state. And uh, I've started with you and I'd like to continue with you. So I'm going to, you know, I, I, whenever you get a property in a new state, I want to know about it. So, uh, so I thought that was kind of a cool relationship to build with this guy. And uh, now I've, I've got him, he owns property in, in two other states, but now I've got him in, in two more states. And uh, it's potentially the start of a cool relationship. And I just thought that was uh you know, the, the, the moral of the story is I think if you just remain consistent, these little golden, golden nuggets show up in this business and things like this happen. And uh, he was just excited to own another property in another state. So that's kind of my favorite deal of the year, I guess. I love that. I, I love those buyers. We don't talk about those buyers enough that consistently keep buying for whatever, for whatever reason. And the longer you're in the business, uh, the more you find these buyers. It's, it's really what you said, Scott, just consistently showing up. Uh, right. Tate, how about you? Do you have a, a favorite deal you want to reminisce about? You know, 2019 was really good to me and to us. And so uh, one of my favorite deals is we did a big deal where uh, we bought, I don't know, like 700 properties from one person. And that might sound crazy to some people who are just listening to the podcast for the first time, but basically I was able to buy an entire subdivision and go to, in this county, one of the largest property owners in the, in the county overnight. So that was kind of cool. I've since lost that title because we sold a bunch of them, but it was cool to, for a while, be number one in that county and something I want to do again. So that, that was one of my favorite deals. That, that is a, a massive deal. And that's something that we don't talk about enough are the bigger deals that we see, these big bulk deals. And again, the longer you're in the business, the more these come about. And then you go about solving the problem of structure and money. But ultimately, the real value in that deal is finding the deal. You find any asset 25, 30 cents a dollar you'll find the money for the deal and um, not a problem there. All right, exactly. Scott Todd. For those of you who are listening to this and not watching video, Scott Todd, where are you right now? 
Right now, I am in my uh, dad's old 1987 Thunderbird Turbo Coupe that uh, has been in storage for years. And after he passed away, it's kind of like my responsibility to deal with it now. So it's uh, it's weird being in a car that's this old and it's a lot of fun to drive. And I'm just sitting outside of the hangar because uh, that's where I am today. So rough life. Rough rough life. The, the, the your, your own private man cave. Yeah, it's amazing. You want to get away, this is where to go. And it's funny because with this car, I now have like a whole corner of the hangar is dedicated to parts. If you need a steering wheel for an 87 Ford Thunderbird, let me know. You need uh, some side mirrors or some bumpers and fenders. And I, I have a whole car in the hangar, I think, in pieces. So, and the, the worst part, Mark, is I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> I don't know how to fix them, but I got all the parts for them, so don't you worry. Hey, that's what the internet is for. You can learn anything on the internet. You can, man. You sure can. That's right. I remember the days where I'd have to go to the library and pick out a book to learn how to do something. Now it's literally in my pocket. Yeah, and, it, and the worst part is, or the best part is, is that you could probably go on YouTube and a 13 or 14 year old kid is telling you how to do it. So that's the cool part. It's yeah, it's, it's literally the best time ever to be alive. It's, it's when you really think about it, it's incredible. They did say, I heard a, uh, a news article or a news story over the week that, that uh, there's been more advancements in the last 10 years than all of hum, human, uh, like he, he, the human race, right? Like the last 10 years have been like the best for the human race. So uh, it's pretty kind of cool to see how that uh, has transformed. Yeah, I mean, we we really want to get geeky. We can talk about Moore's law, but we could, yeah, we could. That's but that's for another time because we want to know about your best deal of 2019, Scott Todd. Not necessarily your best deal, but your favorite deal. I'd say that my favorite deal um, is one where my um, my sales team came across a property that we could buy, and it was way more expensive than I ever paid for a property. Like it was for uh, on a, on a cost basis per acre. It was just stupid. Right. Like, and especially in that area, I'm like, I'd never paid this much money for a property. And, um, I, I was like pushing back. I'm like, I, I don't think so. You know, like, I don't think that's a good idea. And they were, they were adamant that they could sell this thing for, I think we, we were buying it for 8,000 an acre and they, and normally I buy it for 3,000 acre in that area, but they were insistent that we could sell this property for 25,000 an acre. And I'm just like, I don't believe it. No way. And like, I, I wasn't doing it right. Like I was just like, absolutely not. No way. And they, they kept on, right. Like they were persistent and, and, uh, they convinced me to just, just do it. So I did. And like, I regretted every minute of it, right? Like every minute of it, I was mad. I was mad. I wrote the check. I feel like my team had like, uh, bamboo boozled me. I felt like I was weak. I felt like everything. Right. And then we owned it for about six weeks and there was like no interest in the property. And I'm like, see, I told you, this is, we overpaid for it. I'm upset. And they're like, no, 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 no. Just give it time. Give it time. Trust me. Trust us. Trust us. We got it. We got it. We're working deals. And then they came in and, uh, they then sent it to me and they're like, Hey, listen, we just sold the, the property and we didn't get 25,000 an acre. I'm like, see, I told you guys, I told you we didn't get, it. we wouldn't get it. And they're like, we got 35,000 an acre. I'm like, okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so that's my favorite one. I think I'm living vicariously through you. That's my favorite deal of the year. I mean, what, like that just shows you, right? Like the people that are talking to people all the time, they know what they're talking about and it's okay. It's okay to push back. It's okay to kind of be resistant. But uh, sometimes I think you just have to try things and be willing. Like, you know, we always say that we've never lost money on a deal, right? You know, like we've, we always say that and it's true. We're not just saying it. But at some point, you just kind of have to have the faith like, okay, I think, I think that they know what they're talking about. And 
yeah, let's see what happens, right? Let's roll the dice. And if I do lose money on a deal, eh, I lost some money on a deal. That's the way it goes. But yeah, they came through. I, I was just, I was floored. I was blown away. Yeah, this, this land investing niche is absolutely nutty at times. And as I kind of think back of all the deals this year, I think I'm going to be just sort of that person that goes the other way and say my favorite deal were all the deals that I didn't do that were outside of land investing. So oftentimes I'll get emails almost on a weekly basis of different opportunities to invest here or go into this niche or that niche and having that discipline and, and avoiding shiny object syndrome and sticking to just doing land investing deals, I think is my, my favorite deal. And then ultimately thinking about our, our client deals and there's, there's some amazing deals in there. I don't have a good story, but um, you know, I, I just, you know, Tyler and Jen kind of come to mind being, being able to quit their job was uh was great um so that was just one of my favorite sort of stories of the year um for sure Tay, do you have, a, you have a favorite client deal that comes to mind you know there's been uh, i don't know if i'd have one that i'd say is my favorite i've had people do anything from really small just you know bread and butter deals to uh, somebody out there who is able to buy a property and make, I don't know, two, three, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars profit on it. So, I mean, that's obviously a huge, huge home run. But listen, any deal that you can get done is a good deal, right? If you're making money, it doesn't have to be thirty-five thousand dollars an acre. It doesn't have to be a two thousand percent return on your investment. If you're making money and you add a hundred dollars a month to your passive income, it's a home run in my book. So I, I don't know. I'm a little biased. I, I like all my deals. I like the little deals. I like the big deals. I like doing deals, period. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So moving on in the list, we're all big readers and everyone who's successful kind of always says the same thing. They're constantly reading. So let's just start with, Dude, buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, your favorite book of the year, fiction or nonfiction, or both? All right, we're going to have to do both. So uh, I finally read Ready Player One. I had never read it before, uh, before, I, before I saw the movie. Loved it. I'm a big sci-fi fan. So I really, really loved that book. And it just, you know really uh, pulled at my heartstrings because I'm a child of the 80s and I can relate to so much stuff in that book. So I love that book. Uh, business related, um, I've talked before about uh, Procrastinating on Purpose by Rory Vaden. I read another book of his called Take the Stairs, which is seven steps to achieving success in your in life and business and whatnot. And uh, really liked it a lot and would recommend it to anybody because it really applies to this business and applies to kind of the slow journey that we have in getting from uh, ground zero to, to time freedom and passive income over time and uh, how to move forward with confidence and, and prevent yourself from being distracted by all this other stuff. So I would really recommend uh, Take the Stairs by uh, Rory Vaden. I haven't even read that one. I think that, that's a Matt it's, Forbes recommendation, isn't it? I recommended the the procrastinate on purpose to Matt Forbes and then he found take the stairs and he recommended it to me. Uh, so yes, give a shout out to Matt Forbes uh, for pointing us in the right direction there. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit older book. It's from 2012, but it's a, it's a great, great book. Awesome. Awesome. Tate, how about you? All right. So for like a business book, I'm reading, I'm not done with it quite yet, but I really like it thus far. It's called Think Like Amazon, uh, 50 and a half ideas to becoming a digital leader. It's pretty cool. It's, you know, if you read some of the comments on it, it's like having Jeff Bezos advise me or mentor me. So he goes over basically their strategy and you can learn a lot of tactics from it. And he teaches their team how to obsess, you know, over the customer experience, over the customer satisfaction and and get you in the right mindset there. So that one's really good. Uh, think like Amazon. 
Um, it's by John Rossman. Uh, not done yet, but I'm really liking it. And then as far as kind of a more of a leisure book, I'm reading one. Well, I read it earlier this year. It's called The Tour According to G. And Garrett Thomas was uh, the winner of the 2018 Tour de France. And so this is kind of an inside look at uh, what it's like to race that 30 day race at the highest level and the stress and how the team helps you. So, you know, just kind of cool to read that uh, little biography about that event, which was, he was the first Welshman to win the tour. So pretty big. Wow. So I imagine that book has sold more than 50 copies to all the yeah. cycling fans in the United States. Yeah, 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 probably. Not many of, I don't know. I don't know how many it sold, but it's a good read. Really enjoyable, easy read. It I'm wouldn't sad. surprise me if the author actually flies to Vegas and knocks on your door and like gives you a hug for buying the book. Yeah, I'd be okay with that or at least go on a ride with him. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I kid, I kid. Um, all right, those are really good recommendations. Uh, Scott Todd, favorite non-fiction book and fiction book of the year okay so for the non-fiction book um i i would just say uh talking to strangers right like that's one i just finished i really like that book um it's kind of eye-opening how how you think i mean like when you think even about how you how you talk to vas right like there's assumptions that we make we all live life through uh, our own filters we can all be in the exact same moment and see different things, right? You know, it's, it's all in the way we filter things. It's the way that we come at things. And I think that it's kind of eye opening when you understand that there really, there really is no universal communication method, right? Like it really is tailored to each individual and it's easy for us to make assumptions about people that uh, we, we shouldn't make because we're doing it from our own perspective and it's, it, it can be deadly, right? Like, so that's, that's uh, kind of an eye opener for me. Uh, nonfiction, I really didn't read a lot of nonfiction books this year in terms of, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, fiction books. Fiction I didn't really books. read a lot of fiction books this year um, because what I did was I, I probably spent more time like studying stuff about flying, et cetera. So it really wouldn't apply. There's not really a, a flying book per se. It was more of studying for some, some ratings, et cetera, that I'm getting. All right. So, Scott, you stole one of my favorite books of 2019, which we, in a way, read in tandem, Talking to Strangers. So I'm going to say that one of the books that I think was most impactful for me in 2019, and I believe I actually read it in 2018, was Essentialism by Greg McCune. But just going back, because this year we had him on the podcast, which forced me to reread the book. And it's one of those books I think I could read every three months is Essentialism. So for my nonfiction book, I think that was my favorite of 2019, along with Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. And then for fiction, I was Scott, did we read Ready Player One this year or was it last year? Uh, last year. Okay, so that means that for this year, I get to go with The Martian, uh, which the movie is phenomenal with Matt Damon, but the book is, I just read the book this year. It is an incredible book. And uh, ultimately, if you've seen the movie and then you read the book, you really appreciate just how great this book is and, and the movie and how they did it. Um, so The Martian for me was just my top fiction book of the year. Highly recommend. And actually a motivational book as well, because if you think you have problems, this, the, I mean, I actually uh, have my son reading it now. And after the first chapter, he looked at me, he's like, dad, I feel so lazy. And he's just like yeah. motivated to do more after reading this book. So it, it is, it is even a motivational book. All right, let's, let's have a little bit more fun here. Favorite show on Netflix or Hulu or cable, your favorite show of 2019, Scott Bossman. Oh, you guys know it's going to, it's got to be the Mandalorian. 
It's my but favorite it's not done show. Yet. It, it's only eight episodes in. No, it, that, that's eight episodes. It's the season finale. Episode eight is the season finale. Oh, my gosh. Do you, know how, okay. do you know how much they spent per episode there, I was told? Yeah, gazillions. I heard it was like $15 million per episode to produce. Yeah, yeah they were small crazy. movies. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, so it was, was insane. And, this, you know, I really, really, the, the plot line was, was decent. The characters, I thought, were phenomenal. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to season two, fall of 2020. Wow. And then uh, Scott Bossman staying on that Mandalorian Star Wars track. What was your review of The Last Jedi? You mean The Rise of Skywalker? The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. You know, I I loved the movie, right? It's a fun movie. Are there some plot holes in, you know, that, that you could analyze uh, for hours and hours from episode one to episode nine? Sure. But that movie gave me goosebumps. Uh, it there were there were a ton of wow moments. There were emotional moments. I don't know. It had everything I wanted in a movie. I I loved it. I really did. I really did like it a lot. I, I loved it too. My my uh, oldest was like, "Oh, Dad, it's not that great." And I'm like, "What?" And I saw it. I'm like, "Maybe I'm just tired because I saw it really late with his friends." I'm like, "I I, I love the movie." So. There you go. Okay. Big Papa. Favorite show of 2019. You know, 2019 had some good uh, series produced. Uh, I like, I agree with Scott. Mandalorian was awesome. I also liked uh, Peaky Blinders. I don't know if anyone watches that series. That was really good this year. And um, what other ones? Uh, Black Mirror, right? Like, that was awesome. I was really suspenseful. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think those are probably my two favorite that I watched. And I always like like the comedies too. So it's it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Like I, I watch that one a lot. That's, that's really funny too. So that would be kind of my go-to series of 2019. Okay, solid. I have not seen Peaky Blinders, but you're like the you know hundredth person to recommend it. Yeah, it's good. It's it's one of those that you'll start it, and as soon as you get a couple episodes in, you're like, you're hooked. It's got its claws in you, and you're going to finish the season. And now you can truly binge it, because I think there's four seasons out or something like that. So, Yeah, but I, I see I have the Tate Litchfield mindset now. If there's more than two seasons, I, I'm overwhelmed. I, I can't I can't. Yeah, commit. I understand. Commitment issues. Yeah. All right. The brain, the professor... Scott Todd, what's the favorite show of 2019? Okay, well, I don't watch a lot of TV either. So, uh, you know, I would say that I did force myself. Uh, I, I did like Jack Ryan this year. Okay, I like Jack Ryan. Uh, I was a little disappointed with Ozarks. I was hoping that Ozarks would be uh, better, but maybe I just missed something. So, wait, wait was that this year or last year? It was last year, right? Yeah, because last year, because it hasn't come out this yeah. year yet. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't count. Um, I did geek out on uh, on Disney Plus. I did geek out not on the Mandalorian, but on uh, the Disney Imagineering uh, series that's there. I thought it was really kind of cool to see uh, how basically how Walt built Walt Disney World and what happened after he passed away. How the team continued to to kind of build uh, build disney the disney company and um i think that kind of that that is uh 2019 kind of business success as well when you look at what disney has done just like you know they have uh they, you know for a while they were in a law and they just started working on reinventing themselves and like 2019 man it all popped for them they had a incredible year uh, Disney Plus, I mean, what they're doing in the parks, you know, just, just in uh, Walt Disney World in Florida alone with the uh, rise of um, or the, um, the Star Wars land, all that stuff. Yeah, it's amazing because they took what I would call some dead theme parks like uh, Hollywood Studios and you can't even get in there now, right? Like, it's amazing to see how they reinvented themselves. So, 
from a business standpoint, what was your biggest takeaway as far as how they're innovating? I, I would say, you know, don't stop, right? Like don't, uh, you know, they, they got to the point where, and you even see this, you even saw this uh, in the Imagineering, they got, they achieved something that, then they kind of like let it go. So in the Imagineering story, for example, um, Frank Wells, who was working with Michael Eisner and I think in the nineties and he, he, he died, you know, basically what happened was Frank, Frank Wells, he was like the mastermind behind some of the theme park stuff. He was the mastermind behind some of the animation stuff. And then they, they just kind of dropped the ball on that stuff and it became stagnant. And I think that the, that the thing is, it's like, you know, think about like, if you think about Walt Disney World in Florida, Epcot, for example, is a great example that, you know, Epcot was, was a product, uh, you know, like, like the future back in 1982 when it opened. Today, it's like, well, it's boring. Okay. And so there they are. They're back in Epcot now. And they're literally going um, attraction by attraction to recreate it, to, to figure out how to modernize it, how to bring it into 2020 and beyond. So it's really kind of cool to see that evolution. And it's just that it, basically it's like, don't stop reinventing yourself. Just keep growing and, and just keep challenging what you think. When I was, when I was at Hertz and I was at uh, Wharton, you know, one of the things that one of the professors there talked a lot about is the fact that a lot of times companies, they make assumptions based on what they believe. Okay. So, you know, like you, you might believe something's important to your customer, but you don't have the, the facts to support it. So, you know, you make decisions based around what's important to the customer, what you think it's important to the customer, but yet you have no idea how the customer base has changed. So I think that, you know, it's, it's important to, to test your assumptions, to challenge the assumptions and always reinvent yourself. I love it. I love it. Um, fantastic. Uh, okay. So my favorite show of 2019 Scott Todd, we were just voxing about it. Oh, it yeah. It's on yeah, Apple good. TV. I thought it was so well done. The Morning Show. The Morning Show. Um, I don't just, like how they left the cliffhanger for a dang year. Jeez. I know, I know. But aren't you excited to see it? I thought the acting was great. I thought the story was great. I thought it was relevant for our time. And... Um, there was, you know, certainly the, the corporate politics made me appreciate so much that we don't have to deal with corporate politics. And uh, I really like the morning show. Okay, Mark. So I've done some research on this. And I don't know if, if you have or not. But what is your take? Was this written for the Matt Lauer deal or coincidence? What do you think? I think it was a coincidence. Everything that I've read points to the fact that it was a coincidence because they announced the show before the Matt Lauer deal. So either someone had some insider information on how this thing was working, but like it fed right in. It, it's like, it's like a story right out of their own little world there. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe it's a coincidence. It seems like it's right out of that show. Even the colors they're, they're taking from the today show, the right. morning show, but yeah, I, I I do think it was a coincidence. I think it was just in the air. Amazing. Amazing. What, you know, was Charlie Rose before or after Mar Matt Lauer? Uh, I think he was after. Okay, so I don't know. All right, well, Scott Bossman, we've got two more questions before we, we end. <clears throat> Your favorite habit that you created of 2019 what was your favorite habit of 2019 my favorite habit all right so uh i've talked about this before on nightcap i have a post-it note problem uh i got post-it notes everywhere so i i uh i did two things i got um this goes this goes with your other question too so i got one of those rocket books uh and you guys may have talked about that before but it's those erasable notebooks yeah, well, I did. And I think Scott Todd made fun of me for it. I bought one. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. it's it's kind of an erasable notebook I keep next to my computer here and I can I can take notes and, and erase it and whatever. And you can actually, uh, there's an app with it. You can digitize your notes and send it wherever. You can actually send it to like Slack or uh, 
any of these other CRMs as well. So anyway, so I, I tried to control my post no problem with my, with my notebook. And then I, I try to set another habit that I got into was just trying to set like three daily goals for myself. I do that before, but um, I don't know. I, I just try to become a little bit more, uh, uh, just a little bit more disciplined with doing three goals a day, you know, th three big things that are going to move life forward or the business forward or whatever. All right. Fantastic. So you're, you're doing your part for saving the trees yes. and setting those goals. I love yeah. it. I love it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention another show of 2019. I really loved. And most people don't even realize how great the show is. It's called lots. It is looking over Tate's shoulder and so often people are like, Hey, you know, on the podcast have more, you know, land investing and talk more about land investing. We have a whole series on it of watching Tate in real time work land business. So if you want to watch that show and get that subscription, just go to the landgeek.com forward slash lots. Look over Tate's shoulder. All right, big papa. What's been your favorite habit that you have established of 2019? You know, I do something similar. I write down some goals for the day. Um, I've also started sleeping with a notebook next to my bed, right? So I can wake up and write down those good ideas that I have. But one of the things that's, it's been really simple, but I've, I've been a big believer in like theming my days. And now I've gotten to the point where if it's a certain task and it doesn't fall on that specific day of the week, I don't do it. And it's not with like the essential things, but maybe it's like reviewing due diligence from my intake manager. I used to just do it as it came and as it needed to be done. Now I only do it one day a week. And if it's not that day of the week, it can wait. It's not a land emergency. I just let my team know, hey, I'm only doing this on Tuesdays. And so if you submit something for my approval on Thursday, please let the seller know that we're in the process of getting it done. And, you know, it's really helped me kind of get in the right moods. And when I sit down at work that day, I know exactly what needs to be accomplished. And if I look and there's nothing that needs to be accomplished, I don't fill that time with something else. I enjoy it. I say, all right, good. I'm going to go... Uh, on a long lunch or an extra hour on the bike or whatever I want to do. So I don't know if it's necessarily a goal, but it's, I guess it's more organization, getting, getting things uh, to run smoother and a little bit tighter on my end. Fantastic. Fantastic. Scott Todd, how about you? Favorite habit well, of 2019 besides well, I'm flying gonna, like an eagle. I'm going to do what uh, Scott Bossman just did. I'm going to combine this answer with your next question. Uh, even so see where we're getting ahead. So people don't even know what the next question is. Do you want to go ahead and ask us so I can combine it? Scott Todd, what was your favorite purchase of 2019 of a hundred dollars or less? Okay. So my favorite purchase this year was Fleek, the app Fleek. F L E E Q dot I O fleek dot I O. And, um, I think it's free. So that's makes it less than a hundred dollars. And that goes along with my habit. My, if you're not familiar with what fleek is, fleek is a way that you can create, um, for, uh, ever changing videos, if you will, for your team. So if you're going to create uh, training videos, and you know you're you're doing screenshots, whatever, and then the screenshots change because the application changes. You got to go back and redo the whole video. This allows you to to do it on the fly. Just do screenshots, insert the new screenshot, and you're off to the races, right? Like it just makes life a lot easier for for working with VAs. So um, basically, my habit is that whenever I'm asked a question um, on like how do you do something or if I'm asked the same question over and over again, I have tried to make sure that I create a fleek video that shows it. I explain it one time, it's in the library. And then if I'm asked the question again, I just point the person right back to the fleek video, whether it's new to them or if they've already asked me before and they just forgot about the fleek video, I just route everybody back to the fleek video. And so then my habit is that 
eventually you'll notice that your questions start to go down, right? You know, it's like here, I've answered this here and you'll see that people will start to go to the Fleek library or the library for your team and they'll stop bothering you. And that's always a good thing. So I have just kind of made this uh, initiative where I want to answer less questions uh, every year. And so if I can just uh, document it well, even if it changes, they'll tell me, well, it doesn't look the same. Okay, I won't even answer their question. I'll go in and create a new video and then send them the new video. Here you go. There you go. So I'm only doing the work one time. All right, fantastic. My favorite habit that I've established for 2019 was after I read the book by Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep, I really started getting serious about my sleeping habits. And so for me, I made the air cooler, uh, started going to bed every night at the same time. I stopped drinking coffee in the afternoon and I stopped drinking alcohol, really. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm not drinking alcohol because of, of course, nightcap, that would be you know, bad luck, if you will, to not drink while I'm watching nightcap with uh, Scott, Mike, and uh, Matt. But that being said, I, I rarely have more than two drinks now, um, if I drink at all, just because I know how bad it is for my sleep. And that has been a, uh, you know, really part of my, my new habit is getting much more serious about my sleep habits. And if you haven't read Why We Sleep, it's just a phenomenal book and um, one of the best things that, or the thing you can do for your health uh, going into 2020. You know, everybody's like, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. Well, you won't lose any weight if you're not getting a good night's sleep. So you can erase all that uh, dieting and exercise if you don't have your sleep uh, in a good spot. So that was my habit of 2019. All right, Scott Bossman, is the Rocket Book your favorite purchase of $100 or less? I, th I think it is. I'm, I'm trying to think of, uh, of other things I purchased for $100 or less this year. And um, I don't know. I like it. I like the, I like the Rocket Book. Check it out. The Rocket Book. All right, before we go to Tate's favorite purchase of $100 or less, I would say that the best investment that you can make, which is not $100 or less, but just the best investment you can make for your entire life is learn more about flight school and go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd, have him take you up there quickly, efficiently, safely, learn more about how those 16 weeks would not just transform your life, but your family's life, get you out of solo economic dependency, which means if you're not working, you're not making any money. And we have seen it time and time again, how even just their first deal literally pays for flight school itself. Learn more, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with Dude Buddy, the Nightcap OG Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master Mike Zeno. All right, hey Litchfield, what do you got? What's been your best investment this year, $100 or less? Uh, I don't... I don't really know. Um, I like my AirPods. I don't know. Um, that's not a hundred bucks, but they're awesome. And I use them every single time I'm on the phone now. So I'm breaking the, the budget a little bit, but I love those things, man. They're awesome. Okay. And I'm wearing mine. Scott's wearing his. My wife just got AirPod Pros, which uh, she loves. I, I know it's over the budget, noise. but they're, nothing, they're nothing awesome. Nothing hundred bucks or less. What about, what about your, like your razor stuff? Yeah. I mean, but I've been doing that for a while, right? Like good, good razors and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what else hundred bucks or less that I use on like a regular basis. Um, I don't know. I, I've done some nice things for like my wife when I'm traveling for, for boot camp. I'll typically send breakfast to her that day, have it Uber Eats. So that's money well spent and that gets me in good graces with the family. Um, I don't know. Try and I that's don't know. I feel idea. like I'm just I'm just digging deep right now. I, I don't know. Fleek is awesome. I use Fleek too. So I, I can tell you what my worst purchase under $100 was. What? 
the supply razor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Me, me and Zeno. Uh, me and Zeno agree. All right. In it. Okay. Uh, we will be seeing each other in what? <laughs> about eleven days, correct? Yeah. All right. I will walk you guys through how to shave. I don't need with to be a straight walking. razor because I it, do it. it. It takes some practice. I've done it. I don't like it. I use a safety razor. I'll walk you through how to how to shave with the best razor out there. Take you the safety razor, don't you? A double, uh, I do double use, sided. Is I do it like use a safety razor. Board? I think uh, you're missing yeah. the boat, Mark. I think you're missing. The I know boat. I'm, I'm not missing the you. boat. I, I know I'm not because I love my shaves. It's, it's I like have used that one. Every, every morning Mark for has. myself. Yeah, it's a see, good one. I like the weight. Either. I like the, the weight of so it. Nice. Yes, but the shave not that great. Not for me, at least. And, it, Must be and I'm saving money, by the way, on the Gillettes because the razors are so inexpensive. Yeah, well, I'm saving money too because I use the safety razors. I pay, uh, you know, like I think I pay like uh, I don't know pennies, pennies. Yeah, but now now I now I've got to breathe your plastic because you're throwing out those razors. They're so bad. No, 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 for no, the no. environment. No, you don't. No, no, no. I'm using. I'm using. Uh, I'm using a razor. Okay, like not a Gillette. I don't use Gillette. It is a safety razor. It's not the one that you're thinking of. It. It is. Well, it's not it's the disposables. Like the, no, it's like Correct. an old. Yeah. It's like the old barber T-shaped one. Okay, and you put a razor in the top of it, a, a disposable razor, very similar to what you have, except this is a double-edged razor. So there's a razor on each side of it, so I can go this way down. And then flip it and go the other way and keep doing it, keep moving it. When the razor's dead, you throw the razor away, but the there's no plastic to it. It's not like there's three blades to it. It's a double edge. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you converted. You're gonna be like, ah, oh, this was a better deal. I'm 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 flexible like a yogi. I'm I'm open to it. Uh but I really do love my razor. So my uh all right, fine. So Scott, your your investment was fleek.io. <laughs> Scott's was Rocketbook. Tate was um, AirPods, AirPods, which kind of broke the budget. Mine this year, so for years, I've been a long term, long time meditator for years and years and years. I've always used the same app, Headspace. And I might go to Calm as well, but I've loved Headspace forever. But this year, I went to Sam Harris's app, which is new, called Waking Up. And his 20 minute daily guided meditations. I just love that has been the best subscription and investment. And it's under a hundred dollars for the year that I've made it. It is the best way to start today with a calm mind and centering yourself in the waking up app. So that's been my best investment. Well, I thought this was a, a really great podcast. You guys to end the year, I want to, I want to thank you guys for you know, consistently showing up on these roundtable podcasts, giving so much value. Um, I want to thank the listener and all the support that we've gotten this year. Again, please, the best, the, the best compliment we can get is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course for free as well as the new wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money in 30 Days or Less on a Land Flip. So please do that. And by the time you hear this, it'll already be 2020. Let's start off 2020 the right way. Start building up your passive income. Make that investment yourself. Learn more again. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Gentlemen, it's been an amazing, amazing year. Uh, and I think 2020, I'm, I'm a big believer in the even years is going to be even better than 2019. What do you guys think? Yeah. You like the even years or the odd years better? Scott Bossman. I'm an odd, I'm an odd number guy. You're not a number guy. All right. Tate. Uh, I, I, I've never put any thought into it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess even years. Well, when you're so young, you probably don't even have the perspective on the years anyways. Like time is just, I don't even understand time. Like it's just whatever. Scott Todd. 
I don't know. I don't know if I have a a better feeling even or odd. I'm like Tate. I don't know. It's never a year's a year. I don't know. Yeah. A year's a year. Okay. Well, um, it's been a great one. So for the last time of 2019, we'll do this together. One, two, three. Let Let freedom freedom ring. ring. Every year it gets a little, uh, a little better. More awkward. (laughs) A little little longer. A little longer. longer. Eric, Mimi, and uh, and Zeno, they're they're missing the the awkward ending on this roundtable. We'll have to get them back. you know, next year. And, uh, and certainly looking forward to more tips of the week from Eric and Mimi as well. I think this whole podcast was all tips of the week. Don't you think? I do. Yeah. Sure. There's some, there's some great stuff. It's in like there. the last one too, when we were building the big stocking. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. I imagine that, uh, Boston, because it's Wisconsin, will be partying like a rock star tonight. Exactly right. Cheese curds and, and uh, old style. Yeah. <laughs> Tate, what about you? Uh, nothing. Just don't wake the baby up with your fireworks. That's all I ask. Just, just keep the noise to a minimum, okay, people? Good luck with that. It, it, yeah, I know. Yeah. Wishful, Scott, how about but... you? Uh, yeah, just staying at home. Just... Uh... I was asking my wife, like, um, or my wife was telling me today, she's like, yeah, I think uh, it'd be pretty cool to go down to see, like, some of the fireworks, whatever. And I'm like, well, you realize the fireworks are, like, at uh, midnight, right? And she's like, oh, yeah, that's too late. It'll just be at home. <laughs> the, the, uh, this year, my wife and I get to be on our cell phones and make sure that the teenagers are where they're supposed to be as we track oh, them nice. oh, nice. through the night. Nice. That's that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're gonna you worry all night. You have a command center set up, like each each kid gets their own laptop that you're gonna track them on. Absolutely, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Is that wrong? No, no, no. You know, it would make it uh, even better though. Is viewing what? it from a big old surface. Is this <laughs> really? Is this how we're gonna end the year? <laughs> I mean, All it's right. been a it's been an ongoing um, theme throughout the year. I mean, why, why let it why let it go out now, right? No, it, it's true, and I I have to live with one because my, my middle son has one, and yeah, um, he's a smart kid. Yeah, he's he's yeah, exactly to the point where um, I'm going to have to walk him through just you know here's here's a excellent sort of experience and here's what you're what you're doing the surface here's the here's the excellent experience on the surface and here's how it, my life could be better if if apple would catch up it's okay mark it's all good i mean the surface is nice I, i'll i'll give it to you it is nice. they, they've done a good job they've done, they've done a very good job. i will I, tell you though i will tell you the other day uh because i still have a macbook pro the other day i was downstairs and uh MacBook Pro would was a better a better fit for what I was doing, so I was on it. So you see, I'm I'm uh, I'm not I'm not a uh, fanboy. I will go to the technology that makes sense. And I was doing some video editing, and uh, the MacBook was was pretty good for that one versus the the portable Surface. I do like the big Surface though. So my big uh, Scott Boss, are you gonna are you gonna move to the dark side in 2020? Uh, absolutely not. Tate, dark side? No. Yeah. But I do, I do respect it. I, I think it's a pretty cool tool and I don't, I don't know. I say I wouldn't, but I, I could enjoy it. I think Scott showed me some pretty cool features with it that are really, uh, tempting. So as of right now, I'm going to say no, but ask me again in six months. Uh, oh boy. See, he can be, he could be bribed just with a gift. He, he could be like, he could be bribed. Scott Bossman, much fear in Tate. I sense it. 
<laughs> I sense, I sense the conflict. Anyways, bum, bum, I gotta bum, go. Bum, 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 I gotta go before I say something I regret. Like I already have one, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got one for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, happy healthy New greatest, Year. Allison got me the greatest thing ever. It's a surface. <laughs> All right. Unreal. I, I have no words. All right. Well, happy, healthy New Year, New Year's, fellas. Take care. Thank you. You too. All right. Yeah. Boston, yeah. be safe. Be safe out there. Will do. All right. See you guys in a few weeks. Actually, a week. Boot camp. See ya. See ya.